So it had not escaped our attention that we're a greenhouse company that had no greenhouse videos. So today we're going to remedy that by doing a walkthrough through the greenhouse we just finished here at our office in Danville, Illinois. And uh, you'll have to excuse the uh, semi noise. We're in a sort of a commercial area next to a busy road. So periodically there may be the uh, horrid roar of, <laughs> of semi engines in the background. And we're sorry for that. But we'll take a walk through and we'll walk through all of these systems in the greenhouse and sort of just give you a very quick uh, once over of uh, how a greenhouse works, uh, what the system is for, and why you might want one. Hi, it's Drew with Greenhouse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, okay, yes? Yeah. Okay. Hi, it's Drew with Greenhouse Megastore, and today I'm very excited to do a walkthrough of the greenhouse we have constructed outside our office. This is a 24 by 48 Gable 7500 structure. Uh, this is uh, one of our most popular and common buildings that we build. Uh, it is uh, used a lot in educational purposes. You can use it for research purposes. It's great seed starting house and they're a great way for your school, your institution to have a greenhouse uh, with full environmental controls. So a greenhouse is all about I love it. I love it so much. So a greenhouse is all about energy management and specifically heat energy management. Um, and how a greenhouse works, I'm sure everyone's familiar with a hot car on a, on a warm day. The infrared heat energy from the sun will come through the covering of the greenhouse and because the air in here is enclosed and it's not able to mix via convection, the temperature inside the greenhouse will uh, will raise uh, dramatically uh, in some cases. So you have to manage that energy, but it's a good thing because plants like it warm and so you can keep it warm enough to grow plants, but not so warm that they're damaged. So the first system or the first step in managing that energy is uh, allowing the heat energy in. And what we use on the exterior of our buildings for that is polycarbonate covering. It's polycarbonate plastic with a UV coating on the outside. Uh, if it didn't have the UV coating, the polycarbonate would degrade very quickly. Uh, so this comes in a six foot wide sheet as long as you need it. And so this whole wall uh, just lays up in six foot sections and there are aluminum pieces that hold it all together. It's a d uh, double wall, so there are two thin walls with an airspace in between, so there is actually some insulating value to the covering. Um, and it's probably the most cost effective way to cover such a structure. Uh, glass is also a pretty common a glass greenhouse, but glass is very expensive and it breaks very easily. This is impact resistant, shatterproof, uh, and it's just an all around great uh, and, and, and cheap uh, covering for a greenhouse. Oh, can I punch it? So once you get the heat energy into a greenhouse, unless you're able to effectively manage it, it's going to get too hot for plants uh, in the structure. So for example, I have an unheated and uh, unventilated greenhouse structure at home, a very simple one, but even in February when it's maybe 20 degrees outside, if the sun is out, it'll be 80 or 90 degrees in the greenhouse, uh, which in February is already too hot. So we have a few ways of managing that. Uh, in a structure such as this, what you often see is a fan and shutter system, a powered fan and shutter system. So these are our exhaust fans. Uh, when the, these turn on, the shutters will open, this is a fan, and what happens is these are pulling air out of the building through the fan, and the uh, inlet air comes from the other side. There are shutters that open at the same time, and so air from the outside comes in, and it's, the air inside the building is pulled out through the fans. And if you call and talk to a salesperson here, all of these calculations are going to be done for you. You just have to give the dimensions of the building you're going to be working with. So this is the most common way and probably the easiest way, uh, the most reliable way, that is, uh, to manage heat in a greenhouse because all of these can be hooked up to a thermostatically controlled control system uh, or microprocessor control system uh, that you can set your temperatures, how cool you are okay with it getting, how warm you want it to get, and everything will then run automatically without any further management on your part. Can you see the coffee cup? Sometimes. Okay, well, so it's not like always in the shot, so it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah controls, I don't know, I don't wanna like segue into that, so I mentioned like whatever. <clears throat> 
So I mentioned uh, all the environment. Uh, <clears throat> So I mentioned all the environmental systems being uh, wired into a central control system, and this is the control system that we have chosen. This is a Wadsworth controller. There are others. Uh, MicroGrow is a, a controller that we often use, especially in educational uh, greenhouses. There is also a more uh, computerized controller called the iGrow um, that is a wonderful controller too. Any of them are great. We've chosen the Wadsworth, uh, Wadsworth um, uh, just because we felt it would be the right one for this application. And this controller uh, is tied to a contactor panel and then it's tied to the electrical panel. Now what's all that stuff mean? The contactor panel is just uh, the actual circuitry that turns the systems on and off. And so there are wires running from the controller into the contactor panel and that actually will turn things on and off. And the controller is where you set everything that you want. So, for instance, right now we have this greenhouse set to be uh, no cooler than, I think it's 75 degrees during the day and uh, 70 degrees at night. And that's because we're, uh, I have some tomatoes, they're warm weather crops, we're going to be starting some seeds in here uh, and things like that. This also has a shade controller, which we have in here, but it's not ready to go. Uh, the circulation fans are also tied into this, uh, and then also we have an evaporative cooling system. All of that is tied in and is controlled by the temperature settings here in the controller. So any of the three controllers um, are great. This is the one we've chosen, and uh, this one's uh, great too. We have it wired into a computer. We can access it remotely. We can change things remotely. Uh, there's a daily log of high-low temperatures. Uh, any number of things. You want to check out more details on any of the controllers, you can check our website. All that stuff's there uh, for you to look at. Um, the benches. The ben I know the benches. Okay. How well do you know the benches? So I want to talk about the benches here a little bit. We have portable steel greenhouse benches uh, in here. Uh, there are a few other types of benches you can put in. I like these if you're going to do... Um, uh, non non rolling benches because you can actually move these around so you can change your configuration uh, a little bit. You can have fixed benches that are actually attached to the concrete slab uh, and the tops do not roll, um, which are fine, but I don't really like those because you can't change your configuration. And then there are also rolling top benches that you can put in in which the legs are fixed to the concrete, but the tops are on rollers and they slide side to side and that just allows you to maximize your growing space. And you might see that more in a research or production facility and not so much uh, uh, an educational facility or something like that. Uh, all of those are great options, but I do like the portable steel uh, benches. Uh, it's simple to put together and uh, very durable. The tops are made of uh, this plastic. Uh, these are portable steel or portable bench tops or, or they're plastic bench tops. And they're just sort of, you know, this number here. And they just lay right on top. They actually interlock together if you want to, but we're sort of lazy. We just have them laying on there. Uh, but they're a great way to put a, a top on your bench. You don't have to have those. There are other ways of doing it. Expanded metal is pretty common, especially with rolling benches. Uh, but this is a nice cost-effective way of getting a nice covering. And it's uh, open, so all the drainage from the water and plants just goes through to the floor and then into the drain. Uh, and it's just a nice way of uh, having a bench on a flat surface for your plants. Uh, behind me is an HAF fan. That's a component, actually, of the ventilation system. And what these do, uh, in this size greenhouse, there are usually just two. There's one on uh, one side pointing one direction, and then there will be another one on the opposite corner pointing the other direction. And the purpose of these is to sort of swirl the air in the greenhouse uh, to um, just it, it helps the your heating and your cooling be more efficient if you just if you just let the air sort of sit in here there will be warm spots cool spots uh, things like that your heater may have to work harder depending on where your thermostat is things like that so this just moves the air around and it's a really uh, important efficiency measure it's also a cooling measure and these are just simple fans, and they have, these also are hooked into the control panel, and they're controlled uh, thermostatically. I think that's really all I need to say about HF fans. It's, it's a freaking fan, so. Yeah, it blows. It blows <laughs> I don't know what else you want from me. So I mentioned that a greenhouse was an exercise in heat management. 
and that's totally true, but depending on what you're going to be doing in your greenhouse, you may also need some supplemental heat. Now that's uh, particularly true if you're going to be doing some early season seed starting or if you want to grow uh, certain crops over the winter. So a lot of places will grow things like tomatoes and cucumbers over the winter uh, in greenhouses so they can uh, sell a crop. Now that act absolutely is going to require uh, some heat, but even early season seed starting uh, is going to need some heat to help your seeds. And when uh, that is a requirement, we put heaters in the greenhouse. These are also uh, hooked up to the control panel, are thermostatically controlled. In general, uh, we put in Modine heaters, but there are a number of other brands out there uh, to be put in. Uh, these, this particular one uh, is gas-fired forced air heater. Uh, the heater must be sized to your heating needs. So if you purchase one from us and you talk to a salesperson, those are all calculations that are going to be done and they'll size the heater uh, that you need. I'm standing in front of the cool cell or the water wall, uh, which is a component of the cooling system. If you're going to be growing, uh, if you're going to be using the greenhouse in the middle of the summer, depending on where you're located, you're almost surely going to need uh, an evaporative cooling system. Uh, like this or uh, another such system. This, uh, this cool cell wet wall operates on negative pressure. So when the fans kick on on the other side, the inlet shutters on the other side of this uh, wet wall, uh, they, the air comes in, there's water that trickles down these paper pads and the process of evaporation uh, by the water into the air cools the air and therefore cools the space. It's a great way to make more use of your greenhouse throughout the growing season because in the middle of the summer it gets very, very hot and this can keep it uh, to a temperature that will allow the plants to continue to grow and flourish. So these, this cool cell, or wet wall is it just has these paper pads now this is a, a coating that helps uh, save the pad from degradation over time uh, but it's really just paper uh, the, this one's been cut but they usually come in one foot widths and then they are put in here along uh, however long the cool cell needs to be uh, but this is a great system also hooked into the control panel so it's all thermostatically controlled everything works together and in general harmony and uh, the result of that is just a very controlled environment in which you can basically grow anything you want anytime you want. An option you can put in a greenhouse uh, that a lot of places will do is an irrigation system and it's a great option. Uh, it also can be tied into a controller. Behind me is the controller we've selected for this specific greenhouse. This is a Rain Pro controller. There are others. Uh, Sterling is a big name. Uh, we sell all of these. But uh, basically the way they work is uh, there are electric solenoids that are wired into this controller and then you designate areas in the greenhouse as a zone and each solenoid controls a zone and uh, that all works electronically. It's wired into the controller. The controller will tell the zones when to turn on and off based on a uh, timing schedule that you have set. Uh, and it's just a, a nice, easy way to water everything. You can do either overhead or drip irrigation. Uh, you can even run uh, just hose bibs, uh, if you want, off of the irrigation controller. These will go anywhere from three to 11 or more zones. So you can have quite a diversity in your watering schedule uh, when you have uh, such a controller and irrigation system. Okay, we're good? Nope, not good. Okay, nope. Are you close? Another optional system uh, you can put in the greenhouse is a grow lighting system. Now you, you may need some general lighting uh, in your greenhouse. It, it just depends. If you're only going to be using it during the day, I guess there's no specific reason you need general lighting. But uh, if you're building this for a school or other institution, there is usually going to be a requirement for some base level of general lighting. Uh, what we have in here right now are just simple fluorescent fixtures. They are waterproof for a moisture-rich uh, environment, and uh, that, that is all we have currently is just general lighting. You also can have grow lights. Those can be uh, uh, high-intensity lights, hid lights, uh, either uh, metal halide or uh, sodium lights. Uh, you can have uh, some of the electric lights or some of the newer lights that are uh, coming out that are also high-intensity LED lights. Anything uh, that you want as far as grow lighting goes, that is going to depend on what your needs are for supplemental lighting. Generally, I would say that's more 
going to be used if you're growing uh, when the daylight hours are short, uh, like in the winter, or if you have uh, a growing environment where you need to do some uh, natural light blackout, where you need a specific uh, number of hours in the total darkness and in uh, a certain spectrum of light. And again, all of that can be wired into the control system. It can turn on and off. You can actually hook uh, photo sensors up that detect the ambient light outside the greenhouse and we'll turn the lights on accordingly. It can get very complex if you wanted to, uh, but it's also not an incredibly complicated thing if you don't want that. I'm standing next to uh, something that more and more people are, are requesting at least information on uh, to put in the greenhouse and that's a hydroponic system. Uh, the lovely people at Crop King uh, came and installed this for us and we haven't actually used it yet but our plan is to put some lettuces and herbs and things like that in it. Um, so I'm not a hydroponic specialist but I believe this is a continuous flow uh, table and so the nutrient solution will run in here, the plant roots are in the bottom and it flows across down into the uh, tank, the storage tank for the water. This can also be an aquaponic system in which fish actually uh, contribute the nutrients that flow through uh, the solution, the water solution, uh, but more more, uh, more conventionally it will be some kind of liquid fertilizer that you actually mix in there. But we haven't actually got into this yet. Uh, there's another type of hydroponic system that uh, you can use, uh, and this is the Dutch bucket system. I think this is used more to grow taller things like uh, peppers and cucumbers and tomatoes and like that and it disposes buckets and then there's a support rail that you can uh, support your vining plants or your uh, tall plants up here uh, and that just allows you to grow without uh, soil medium. And I feel like I have to squint too much yeah. like bright right here. <laughs> it's bright it's cloudy too. It's worse. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Okay. <clears throat> So one of the best things about these structures is the speed with which they go up. And that's really true with any of the commercial greenhouse structures that we sell, um, even the aluminum ones made by VC greenhouses, but because those are aluminum, there's a little bit more material uh, in them. Uh, these are steel, they're manufactured by Conley's Manufacturing. In a building this size, the building alone, the outside, the framing, and the cover can go up in as little as four, but certainly between five and seven days, weather dependent. Uh, if the weather's not good, obviously it's going to take longer. And then the systems, uh, the heating, the cooling, um, all of those systems will go in in probably no more than 10 days. And then uh, it's really just a matter of the electrical, the watering, things like that. Now when you order a project from us, it just sort of depends on what your specific project is. Sometimes we will handle uh, all of the contracting to get the electrical and the water in. Sometimes. Uh, this is particularly true uh, with schools. There will be a general contractor who handles that and we sort of all work together uh, to get the greenhouse to you. Uh, but there's certainly always going to be electrical, always going to be water. Uh, but there's no reason that one of these buildings uh, can't be in and completely finished with the keys handed over to you in a couple of weeks. Now, I would not depend on that type of timeline. Uh, if I were you, I would always allow for a little extra, but that's, that just sort of shows how quickly all this stuff uh, can go up.